see my screen? Yep. Okay, start recording. Good afternoon, this is Julie Bloomquist. I'm with the PASS Database Administration Virtual Chapter. Today we're having a lecture on SQL Server Encryption uh, with Ben Miller. My name is Julie Bloomquist and our meetings are sponsored by Dell Software. There's some upcoming SQL Saturdays. These are one-day mini-conferences. Uh, here are the ones listed in North America and internationally for June and July. You can always visit the SQLSaturday.com to see, to register for an event or to see what's in, coming up in your area. If you are planning on attending the PASS SQL Summit, uh, you can save $150 right now if you use the discount code VC15FPS6. Uh, for every uh, 10 people who register with that code, we will raffle off a summit uh, in, uh, pass. Uh, today it's uh, still $17.95 until July 12th. This is the top SQL Server uh, educational event uh, with you know over the 190 technical sessions. Uh, so if you're at all in SQL Server or BI professional, you should consider attending the PASS Summit. It is again in, uh, it's in Seattle this year in October. Our community is growing and we have quite a diverse lineup of uh, not just uh, virtual chapters, but online training. And we have the 24 hours of PASS uh, that's coming up June 24th and 25th. So you could register at 24hoursofpass.com and those are recorded so you will be able, once you register, you will be able to listen to the recordings if uh, you're not up for 24 hours. Here are the virtual chapters uh, that are listing, are just part of them. You could take your PASS membership and associate it with any physical or virtual uh, group and you just get emails about the upcoming meetings and if things are posted. If you're interested in volunteering, there's quite a few uh, uh, opportunities with PASS. And you could just go out to the PASS website and take a look at those or send an email in. And this is the PASS uh, information. Uh, ben is our presenter today. Ben's been a member of the SQL Ser Server community for over 17 years. He is currently the director over the database administration for Nature's Sunshine Products in Lehigh, Utah. He's a SQL Server MVP and an MCN, MCM in SQL 2008 and uh, 2012. And he spent time in the field using SQL Server since 1997. He's worked at various companies throughout the years, throughout the U.S. as well as at Microsoft for seven years. And he is very passionate about SQL Server and automation and in integration. And here are his, uh, where you can find him online. I'm going to pass uh, the presentation over to Ben. Let's see, settings, change presenter. So thank you, Ben, and you could start working on your presentation. Okay. Great. Glad you guys can make it. Uh, it's always fun to get involved in a virtual chapter. It's hard uh, to, to see your faces, but uh, hopefully they're all happy. Uh, we're going to talk about SQL Server encryption today, so there's going to be a, a big piece of uh, TDE is the main focus, but I'll also cover uh, a lot of things about the symmetric keys and asymmetric keys and how you would encrypt data with uh, the use of SQL Server. So I'll leave that. Uh, you'll get the slide deck and everything, so I won't go over this slide, but uh, this is about me and uh, just to introduce you to me. Um, this is the agenda for what we're going to try to cram into an hour. Uh, the first most important thing we're going to go over is the encryption hierarchy, and if you don't take away anything out of this presentation today except that, I, I think your time will be well spent. The uh, encryption hierarchy is how encryption works in SQL Server. As long as this hierarchy is in place, 
you will have a good experience with encryption. If one piece in the middle goes away, that uh, it becomes harder. We'll also go over the keys, the different types of keys, symmetric keys, asymmetric keys, and also the database encryption key and why they're useful. Uh, we'll talk about certificates, then we'll dive into TDE uh, in, in pretty good detail. Uh, we'll talk about encrypted backup and cell encryption. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get through as many demos as we can, uh, get you to the point where you can use encryption, not only just TDE, but other encryption. But uh, if, if we don't get through it all, I do have uh, demo scripts that uh, will accompany the uh, slide deck uh, after the, uh, the presentation. So here's the first part of the encryption hierarchy and the things that you need to know about uh, encryption. The first piece is that Windows is where SQL Server lives. So inside Windows, there is a data protection API called DP API. You'll probably hear about it uh, in, in various circles. But basically, this is the lowest level of encryption. It uses the operating system plus some components of the operating system to protect any secrets or certificates or things that it needs to protect. And these are very, very specific to the machine. So if you have anything that is protected by the data protection API on that machine and you move that item that was encrypted that way to another machine, it won't, it won't decrypt. It, it, that's irrelevant. So this is the first level of encryption in SQL that will help to protect everything that everything below this level uh, is protected up above. So if you think about the hierarchy as, as the root to the leaf, uh, the, the first root is the DP API. If that's not in place, it won't work. The DP API will encrypt the service master key. So every time SQL Server starts up, it will generate itself a master key or a, 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 if you've ever looked inside the, uh, the data directory where the instance starts up, it will create a certificate for itself. Um, this master key actually is stored as the service part and it is instance level. So this key is the, is the root uh, above the API that protects Windows. The next piece, uh, after the service master key is generated and protected at the operating system level, the next level is at the master database level. Uh, there is a master key created uh, in the master database. Uh, that database key is encrypted up the chain, so it's encrypted by the service master key, which the service master key is encrypted by the DP API, so you have a continuum that is encrypted throughout. This master key is very, very important in that every piece of encryption that you use, such as TDE and other things, are dependent upon this master key being in the database master. Uh, this is stored in the, in, in the master database because this is the first database that gets recovered. If this database cannot be recovered, it doesn't really matter what else you have encrypted because the instance will not start. Uh, once this database is started up, it then loads the other pieces that is necessary to, uh, to complete, and this is the next piece. This is the most important piece of encryption in the encryption hierarchy. Uh, all the other things can be regenerated. This certificate cannot be. Uh, it can only be restored from a backup. The reason is because in any PKI or public key infrastructure, uh, there is a public key and a private key. The public key is available to all and, and is available to encrypt data by anybody who has rights to that public key. But the private key is held very secretly uh, by SQL and it is stored in the master database, and especially when you're using TDE. You can create certificates in, in other databases, but you cannot use those certificates to encrypt a database. The, the, the keys that are in this certificate must be in the master database. The, if you lose the public key, uh, the public key is fairly uh, easy to get, but the private key is encrypted uh, below the scenes with the, the encryption hierarchy. If you lose the private key and cannot restore it, anything that is encrypted with that key is gone. There's no way to have Microsoft get it there's no way to uh, regenerate that key exactly as it was generated before. So 
this is a secret that you must protect. Just as you would back up a database and protect it, you need to back up and protect the certificate. After the certificate, there's a special uh, key that was created for TDE, and, and this is specific to TDE, not just encryption. Uh, but there's a database encryption key that is a symmetric key, but it is called out with new uh, DML structure uh, called a database encryption key. This is actually created in the database that you will create encryption. Uh, where this, uh, key, this is stored so that when the database boots up after master is restored, or after that master is recovered, then this will actually enact the encryption in the database and allow you access to this database. Again, if you lose the certificate above it, uh, then everything below the, the, the piece you lose will be uh, not able to be used. This is the new, uh, the, so the, the, old, the old encryption hierarchy was what I just showed you. This is the new one, if you look in books online, and out online, this is the new one that shows you all the new pieces and how they fit together. So you can see in there are their passwords. That's what PW stands for. They're symmetric keys, asymmetric keys, certificates, uh, an EKM module, which is an enterprise key management module. Uh, we won't really talk a whole lot about that, but that's another way to manage your keys um, and protection things. Uh, so that, that's something to understand about that. Uh, but I just put this in there for your reference. So let's talk about encryption keys. The first two types of keys you'll hear about in the wild and in any encryption piece of SQL is a symmetric key and an asymmetric key. A symmetric key is basically a key. That is a one part key. Uh, you can specify the algorithm. One thing to remember is that uh, you should not be using any RC4 algorithms. Uh, they've been cracked, they'll be removed later. But for now, if you're creating new encryption algorithms, you should not use any RC4s. Uh, those, are, those are not to be used. Uh, the symmetric keys that are created with a triple DES3 key uh, use 192 bits. You don't get to control the, the length when you use a triple DES3 key. It automatically specifies that it's a 192-bit key. Uh, when you look at the triple DES Without the three key, it uses a 128-bit key. So obviously, the one thing to remember as we begin this thing is you'll see a lot of different uh, sizes of keys. The more bits, the more secure it is, the harder to crack it is, but also the more overhead there is. So there's a, a trade-off in the payload in that the more bits, the more encryption, but the more bits, the longer it takes to encrypt. So you could uh, you want to look for a sweet spot of I'm secure enough or if you're trying to uh, satisfy a certain level of encryption that that will uh, you'll, you'll pick the right key for that if you have a specified thing from a vendor or from a, a regulation that you're trying to do. Symmetric keys are the faster keys. Uh, they only have uh, one part to them and they have an algorithm so that that's one thing to remember is they are the fastest keys. Asymmetric keys, on the other hand, asymmetric just may, means that there's two parts. It's basically a key pair. The asymmetric keys are a little slower. Uh, they do have restrictions in that only Windows logins, SQL Server logins, and application roles can own symmetric keys. Asymmetric keys, they cannot be owned by a different uh, entity, so groups and roles cannot own them. Uh, the key pair is encrypted by the master key or a password. You can do either one. Or if you are in an enterprise where you have key management, uh, you can plug one of those in that's supported by SQL Server and that can manage your keys. Uh, you can have up to a 2048-bit uh, encryption, so that's pretty high. You have 512, 1024, and 2048. That's a pretty high level. But again, remember that the longer the, the bit length, the, the, the more secure, but the more time it takes to do it. Uh, typically, asymmetric keys are used to protect uh, things that are not LTP. You typically would not encrypt data with any symmetric key unless it's accessed very rarely. Symmetric keys are typically used in cell encryption where you encrypt a column and you need to decrypt on, on select. 
The third type of key is a database encryption key, and it's a special symmetric key that's specifically used only in TDE. So when you create the hierarchy and you go to encrypt your database with TDE, you would then go into the database itself, create database encryption key, and you'll see all these things in demo, so you'll, you'll be okay. I don't have to explain them totally in detail, but you'll create it with new DML that specifies you're creating a database encryption key, and then uh, it will uh, it will create one in that database, which then you can turn the database encryption on. Now the notes I put in here are for your sake um, when you get the slide deck, but basically just remember that when whenever you think about encryption, if you're using the same algorithm against the same data with no other things inside, you're going to get the same uh, output. So anytime you encrypt, you want to you, you want to look at data as as a hacker would. In the case of a hacker that's trying to brute force or, or, or decrypt your data or at least know what surface level he's working with, anytime you encrypt data by virtue of a key and not be via the database encryption, you'll want to think about SALT. And we'll talk about this in a little bit uh, more, but basically you can look it up on the web about what SALT is, but think about if you encrypted Ben with an algorithm of AES-256, and that was my username or my password that was encrypted in the database. If you saw Ben in another column uh, or another row, and it was encrypted with the same algorithm, you would see the same exact value. So comparisons to where if somebody did have access to the data but not the key to decrypt, they could see that two rows had the same value in password, which means that they could then determine how valuable or how uh, worth it it is to crack that one password, and they'll go after that one password instead of all of the passwords. So just beware that you want to keep a randomness to, uh, to encryption, and, and we'll talk about that more later. But these notes are for you to think about the things that you want uh, to be aware of. So let's talk about TDE a little more in detail. So TDE stands for Transparent Data Encryption, and basically the concept of this is that the database, when you encrypt it, is encrypted at rest, which means the files. So when the data gets into the data file, so the log file for the data file, it then encrypts it on disk. When the database reads the data out of the physical files, brings it up into the buffer pool, it decrypts it in flight. So all the data in RAM is actually decrypted. When you shut down the SQL Server, the files are in encrypted. So if anybody took a file, it would all be encrypted based on your encryption algorithm. So they are encrypted to keep people from taking things. So if somebody got a hold of your disk or your file or anything or a backup of your database, those are encrypted. But the data as you select it is not encrypted. That's that's a new feature in 2016 that will come out where you'll see that the data is encrypted in flight as well. But for sake of TDE, it does not do that. Now these are the algorithms you can use, uh, the encryption with AES or triple DES. You can see AES 128, 192, and 256 or the triple DES 3 key. Uh, typically uh, Windows, or I mean SQL Server will use the AES-256 when encrypting its databases uh, where you have no control of the algorithm. So that's the one that, that uh, the Windows or the SQL Server uses. Now remember that the encryption is performed at the page level or that, that's what the files are made up of as pages and the data and log files are both encrypted. Now one of the things that is a freebie but you be, want to be aware of is that once one database is encrypted, tempdb is encrypted by default. So that protects uh, any data that goes in flight to the tempdb that gets stored will also be encrypted so these people couldn't get in flight data that was used to either sort data or whatever. When tempdb files are left behind, they aren't recreated until the instance is restarted. So people could take those tempdb files and get some sort of data. When TDE is enabled, it encrypts tempdb by, de by default, so it's, it's protected as well. And the last thing to remember about this is that file stream data uh, is a possibility in a database, but it is not encrypted by TDE 
because it is external to the engine and gets stored on the file system. So TDE cannot protect that data. Now let's look at this, some requirements. Obviously it's an enterprise feature, so you will have to have uh, enterprise edition. It began in 2008, so it's good for 2008, 12, and 14. Uh, those, those editions can uh, encrypt databases. The master database must have a master key, as we talked about in the, in the uh, encryption hierarchy, and the master database must have a certificate that will be used to, you, uh, to encrypt the uh, database with, uh, in conjunction with the user database, database encryption key. Now the user database uh, has a boot page uh, in the database, and that's where the database encryption key is stored. We new DML to turn it on, which is alter database set encryption on. When that happens and the encryption hierarchy is all in place, the database starts encrypting. Depending on the size of your database is going to de determine how long it will take to encrypt it. It doesn't just automatically encrypt it. Uh, it takes time. So if you have a terabyte database, it'll be a while. There are DMVs you'll see in the demo that will illustrate how you can tell where it is in the encryption or decryption because this statement also has the converse of alter database set encryption off, and it will start decrypting the database. Um, the benefits of TDE is that you don't really have to change anything in the database. It just encrypts the entire database, sits it on disk, and everything's happy. Uh, there is an overhead. This, this slide uh, was, was created, and the, the, no one has updated the degradation statistics. Uh, this was back in 2008 days, and no one's given any prescriptive guidance on how much overhead there is now with TDE as opposed to cell level, but what I've seen is it, it's, it's increased as far as it's gotten faster. Uh, so it's not 3 to 5 percent, it's more like 1 to 2 percent uh, with the, with the um, enhancements they've given to SQL, and the cell level encryption is not 20 to 28, it's more like uh, 12 to 15. Uh, but they haven't officially updated it, so I didn't really update my slide to give official guidance, but this is the official guidance out on the web. Uh, the other benefit of TDE that could be seen as a drawback as well is secure backups by default. So knowing that when you back up a database, the data does not go through, it, it, the database, uh, or the backups do not go through buffer pool, so it does not decrypt and then uh, back it up. It actually uh, just pulls it from disk and streams it out to a backup file. Because the files are encrypted, so is the backup. So you do uh, get a secure backup by default, so you don't need to encrypt it. Uh, that's just given to you. The, the other two things, that the at-rest encryption and the encryption itself is really invisible to the user. If I were to go into Management Studio and select data out of an encrypted database, I would see the unencrypted data come across my screen. So. Uh, that is very invisible to the user, and to some, they like that because it is really uh, just encrypting the file so that if anybody steals them, then they're protected. A lot of the standards like HIPAA High Tech and those guys are trying to uh, enforce the rule to, to have this at-rest encryption. Here's the disadvantages. You can see that the backup compression is no longer effective because you're encrypted, so back if you compress encryption, it, you get very little uh, gain from that. Uh, I'll try to demo that if we have some time, but basically no, you, you get maybe a half a percent or a quarter of a percent of compression uh, when, you, when you TDE the backup, it's not, or TDE the database, it's not really that great. Uh, another disadvantage to some is cost, because enterprise edition is required, you have to pay for the uh, enterprise edition license, which is significantly more than the standard edition. So you don't get that uh, without that. Cell level encryption, you have a finer grain control. Say you don't need everything encrypted. Say there's a lot of domain tables and things like that you really don't need encrypted. You could cell level encrypt those columns, and that's what I basically mean is column level encryption. You can encrypt those columns with a symmetric key or certificate and gain some less, less degradation of compression uh, and still have encrypted elements. So the, it, it, it's kind of a disadvantage, but there's a little more work and a little more management involved in cell level encryption, so it's very important to, to go in with your eyes open on that one. When one database is encrypted, again, we talked about that, tempdb is encrypted for all databases because it's a shared database. 
And the the other thing to remember about tempdb is when you encrypt a database and it encrypts tempdb, the only way, even if you were to decrypt the last database, a server restart or a, a, a SQL server restart of the service is required to remove encryption from tempdb because it's created on uh, on start, but it will not decrypt tempdb after you decrypt the last database. It's just one of those rules. I'm not sure if they're ever going to change that, but that's the rules is you must restart the uh, the SQL Server in order to get tempdb decrypted. So this is a new feature in 2014, uh, backup encryption. It, the requirements are that you must have a certificate uh, or an asymmetric key. If you have an asymmetric key, you must use uh, an EKM provider. Uh, you cannot use an asymmetric key and, and not have an EKM provider and use it for the backup. And that's just protection for your sake because if you back it up with an asymmetric key that's not protected outside of SQL Server and that SQL Server goes corrupt, all your backups are, are done. You don't, you don't have any choice. They're, they're all done. You can create a certificate specifically to back up uh, the database and that, that is the way you would back up a database with encryption in 2014. The other requirement in this is that you must create a new media set. You cannot add an encrypted backup to a, an existing media set. So it does require you to create a media set in order to do backup encryption. Uh, back, uh, backup encryption. Now here's the other benefit. If you don't need TDE, but you're looking for a, a encrypted backup, with 2014 on, you can now encrypt your backup, but also compress it. So it does do some compression before it encrypts. So you do still get the benefit of backup and compression. They enhanced it in 2016, so they'll even be it'll even be better uh, than it is now. But for now, if you use 2014, you'll get backup compression on on the encrypted backup. So that's all the that's that's the main slides. We'll come back and do it like a summary wrap up. But right now, we'll go back into demo to make sure that you guys can see what is going on on the in the case of, of using SQL Server with backup encryption and TDE. So the first demo will be uh, TDE. So basically we have two instances. One, we have uh, S1 and S2. They are completely, S2 is completely clean. This is my demo machine. So I will create a database specifically for use in our TDE. So we'll just create this. And that's because I still have a database out there. So just hang in there for a second. We'll go out and create, get this cleaned up. There's a few so basic. What when you sh sorry, there's a few okay, basic questions. Um, okay. One one is if they could use a combination of TDE and cell level encryption. I didn't think you would want to if do they, that. <laughs> if they could use TDE and cell level, yes, you can. Okay. I, I'm not sure why you would accept that. Here's the here's the benefit of of marrying the two. And that is that you do get some luxury in that when you select the data out, it no longer exists. I mean, you, you no longer is unencrypted. So you could have the benefit of TDE for the disk files, but then encrypt the data so that you had to have access to the certificate or key that encrypted it. So if I did a select a social security number from users, that would be encrypted even though TDE is encrypted on disk. I've encrypted it in cell too. So there is, you, you can ma marry the two if you want. I mean, it just depends on your requirements of security. And I thought you mentioned, um, we have a question about just having backup encryption for 2014 and if that's available on the standard edition. Say, say that again? A question about uh, backup encryption for 2014 okay. and if uh -huh. it's available for standard edition, if you just want it your is. backups. Okay. It is. Yep. It's a, the backup encryption is available on standard. There's no, uh, there's no restriction on that. It doesn't have to be enterprise. So we've created our database here for, oh, is there any more questions? No, that's fine. Okay, great. So we've created our database and test TDE. We'll use it uh, here. We'll put some data in it just so we can show we can select data from the database after we uh, after we restore it. So basically the demo is going to go through creation of a database. We're going to encrypt it and then we're going to attempt to restore it to another uh, instance. 
um, and you'll see why the encryption hierarchy becomes important. So we're going to create a table and select from it. Here's my data. And now I'm going to back up my database that's unencrypted so we can see uh, it in the file folder. Now the, the the caveat to this is I didn't put a whole lot of data. So you're going to see that uh, compression won't won't be effective, but it won't it'll be kind of contrived just because I don't have um, the ability to to put a lot of data in here with with time. So let's go and we'll 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 go back here in my master database. We'll make sure we don't have a master key because it doesn't like to create two. Okay, so we don't have it. Uh, let's see. So we already have we already have a master key but I can create a master key for this instance. I have another key in here. This, I have another certificate that's being created, or that's being encrypted by it. So it won't let me drop my master key. So we'll just use the current one, but just know that you can create a master key with a password. Um, you'll see that this part of the encryption hierarchy is not as important as the certificate because I can create a new master key and you'll see me create a new master key in the second instance that has a different password. So it's all about the encryption upward of having the master key encrypted by the service master key rather than the other way around. So let's look at the master key. A master key is considered a symmetric key just like the database encryption key. So there's a symmetric keys uh, thing here and if you notice here's my service master key and here's my database master key. They're both AES-256 and they were created and modified on these dates. Um, if I want to use TDE, I make sure I'm in my master database and I create my certificate. Now, the one thing to remember about the certificates is that the only thing that is required when you create a self-signed certificate rather than one like an SSL certificate out from VeriSign or anything like that, this certificate is self-signed and created inside SQL Server is the subject. You have to name it. So you name, you give it a name for SQL Server's sake and then you create a subject which is part of the standard of the certificates and that's all that's required. It will automatically create an expiration date. It will automatically create all the elements it needs to use as a certificate. The one thing you have to remember that in a certificate there is an expiration date and I'll show you that as we create this guy. We'll create this to, this is called my server cert. I'll use it for TDE. Um, and we'll look at the, the certificates here and you'll see what it created by default. My, my encryption cert was one that's already here. My server cert is we just created and here's our subject. Now notice it says it's encrypted by the master key because my encryption hierarchy was in place. If I created a certificate without my master key enable my master key in master, it will not say encrypted by master key. But notice here's my start date and, and also notice they're in GMT. So all of the dates here in this certificates place is GMT. Um, the expiry date is one year after the start date. But just remember that SQL Server in a TDE manner does not honor the expiration date. So you don't have to worry about the expiration date in this case. Uh, see, SQL will just ignore it. Um, so I've created my certificates right here. Now I'll use my user database because that's the next piece in the encryption hierarchy. Um, but I'll, while I'm here, notice that there's no private key last backup. Okay, it's null. Uh, we'll know why in a minute. So I'm using my test TD database and I'm creating my database encryption key with my algorithm AES-128 and I encrypt by server certificate, which means it's in the master, my server cert, which I just created. Create that and it says thank you. Oh, but look at this. It comes back and tells me that I should be very careful because the certificate private key has not been backed up. And if I don't back it up and I try to restore anything using that certificate, I don't have the private key anymore. So I must back up the private key. So I will go back up here and this, again, you'll get this script. Basically, I'm going to back up my server cert to a file with my private key in a separate file. And that file will be encrypted by this password. So this has nothing to do with inside SQL. 
this is the password that I'm encrypting my private key with. So um, when I back it up here, I'll back up here and it will say, oh, I'm not in master. I have to be in master in order to back up that server certificate. So I back it up. It completed successfully. I go out to the file system and look at my SQL backup. And sure enough, there's my private key and my certificate. So here's my public and private key. Here's my backup of unencrypted. And we'll go back to the demo here. So now it's backed up. So if I did a select now out of sys certificates, I would see that now I do have a date for my private key backup, again, in GMT. So that's the indicator to SQL Server that I've protected it, at least from its perspective, I've at least backed it up. Whether I've protected it or not, that's a whole other animal, but we should protect it. Now the, the last thing to do is to, is to be in master, and I go alter database, test TD, set encryption on. Now I'm going to do more here. I'm going to just select these guys out of here to show you that you can maybe catch the, the encryption state, but I left in the notes how to tell what state it's in. But here we go. So we can see that I am temp, tempdb uh, was encrypted. The encryption state is three, so you can see right here in the notes that it's three means I'm encrypted. Um, and 0%, which is like 100%. The key length is 256. My test TDE, it's encrypted. The encryption state is 2, which means encryption in progress, and my percent done is 30. Now, again, you saw how little of data I had, but it still had to encrypt the files. Um, AES-128 is what I chose, and therefore that's the only selections there. Notice that it doesn't say tempdb is encrypted by the 1. And that is a, I, I'm assuming, because I, I couldn't get a, a, a definitive answer of why that's the case. Uh, there's no nothing in the books online that says why that is. But if I select it out now, it should be 3, 1, and 0, and tempdb is still 0. I'm assuming that tempdb being 0 is a security measure that if they ever wanted to see if they didn't really have access to anything but had access to public and could select the databases, they wouldn't be able to see tempdb is encrypted, so they wouldn't believe any other databases are encrypted. But if I find that out, I'll post it on my blog, but I, I have not been able to find that out yet. The other thing to note is that when you look at, there's, there's two views that you can see whether they're encrypted. One is sysdatabases. There's an is encrypted flag in the sysdatabases. Um, that will tell you if it is encrypted. This is this flag. Um, to create date in sys databases, that is the local time of the creation of the server. If I were to look, there's other the other view is sys DM database encryption keys. That also has a database create date, but it is in GMT. So you can see if I if I select out of here, uh, you'll see that I see a test TDE. The database was created at 10:30. Uh, it's 624, but yet the encryption uh, view says 1035. So it's it's one of those weird, I'm not sure why it has this weird thing, but it, it might be because the encrypt, well, never mind. I think that, I think that I'm think that i being mistaken when I read the, the DMV. I believe this encryption created is actually the, the, the uh, key that was created because it's encryption keys. But it is in GMT, just know that. So the sys certificates and the sys DM encryption keys also yeah, it does GMT. So let's back up this database. Let's use master and backup within it with encryption. And you'll see that the database backs up correctly and it is the same size. Now we're going to back it up with compression. And we'll just specify with, compre with compression as well. And you'll see that it really doesn't matter. It backs it up but you'll see that you get a teeny bit because there's a lot of air in my database. You get a one meg difference. It goes down. I've, I've done a, a, um, an encryption of AdventureWorks 2012 here and I backed it up and, and did the TDE and then backed it up with compression and it was like not even a meg. It was really small difference. So the more data free space you have in the database, it will compress those out because a database encryption of 
a space link is really the same, right? So it can compress that out. But anything that has real data will get really scrambled really quick. So if you have a fuller database, you won't see as much uh, benefit here as, as we did here. Um, just know that. So we're going to switch to instance number two. So we're going to change our, our view to S2, which is our new guy that we're going to do. And we are on the same version. Uh, so we can tell 12, 12, 2000, 12, 2000. So we're in the same version here. I'm going to attempt to restore the file list only to see what's in the backup before I restore it. So let's restore that. And it will come up and tell me, I'm sorry, but you can't. Uh, it couldn't find the thumbprint of that in the, in the master database. So it could not restore it. So let's restore the encryption hierarchy by hand. Uh, the first thing we do is go into master, and then we're going to create a brand new, so I had use one, password three, and it's a different instance password than this guy up here. If we look up here, it shows that we have instance one, so it is a different password, but it will still allow me to uh, establish the encryption hierarchy because this is not about the password, is it about, it's about that there is a master key. So let's create this guy, and uh, I, I had a feeling there would be one. We'll just drop the master key, and we'll create it again. Now, it would not have let me drop the master key like it did on instance one because it has a dependency. If something's encrypting something down the line in the encryption hierarchy, it will not let you delete it. it you, there was a bug, we'll talk about it in a second, that, that did let you do it, but this way, it, in this case, it doesn't. So now we're going to create our certificate, not as a new one we did with subject equals. We're going to create cer certificate, my server cert, from the file, and I could name it something else if I wanted to. If I wanted to name it my server cert too, I could, uh, because it's about the keys, not about the name. So if I said create certificate I from a file, that's my CER file, my with private key file equals this, and then I decrypt by password, my password I use to encrypt this file. Um, and when I go to create it, you'll see, oh, I have an error. And the reason I have an error is this. If you think about SQL Server and how much it cares about the private key for the certificate, it is going to protect this backup of this certificate. Um, if you look at the properties and permissions on this boy, you'll only see owner, whoever owns it, so the creator of it got permissions, administrators, and MSSQL dollar sign S1, which was the SQL Server instance that backed it up. Now, in a normal scenario, you might say, well, I should be able to restore it because everybody's an administrator. All my services are administrators. In this case, to illustrate the point, I S1 is logged in as service MSSQL server, and SQL Server 2 is logged in as local service. So the users are not the same. So if I were to go out here and change the permissions, and I'll just I'll just do it quick for for everyone. If I gave everyone permissions, which you would not do um, in this case, but for this purpose, I could add the specific service right here. I could actually add this, this service account right here. I could add that to the permissions and get it, uh, but let's just do everyone for now so we can restore it. So let's do this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I just, I just didn't do that right. There we go. I forgot to add it to my server circuit too as, as well. Both pieces are important to have, so you can't just do one and have it work. So I have to do both. Now this guy should be happy. Now I've restored it because I had access, the server, the second server had access to it. Now I have my key, and let's look at the key. It now says my server cert encrypted by master key, and there's my subject that I created it with. The creation date is this, and the expiry date is this. Now, notice that's not the current time. It's, it's doing it based on what I restored, just like a database would. And my private key last backup gets reset because I haven't backed it up in this instance. So it will say null. Uh, 
Uh, I could do it that if I wanted to, but right now let's move on for time's sake. SQL Backup Test TDE. I restore file list only and now I can see my files. And it will allow me also to restore it. And it will let me select from the table. So there's my data. The thing we saw before is that um, you know, dropping the master key, if I drop, tried to drop it right now, if I went into my master database and said, please drop the master key, it would tell me no because this is encrypted by it. In 2008, R2 SP2 is when it was fixed. In 2008 R2, if you're still running on that version and you're in prior to SP2, you would be allowed to drop the certificate even if it was protecting a database. So just be careful and drop commands that you really mean to because again if you don't have a backup you're kind of dead. Um, so if I go down in here and I try to drop my certificate it will tell me that it's bound to one or more databases so it won't let me and, uh, and, and again I go and select the data out of the table. In order to do the undo I would have to decrypt the database, drop the certificate, go into master, drop the, or, I mean drop the, the database encryption key then change to the master, drop the server certificate, and then drop the master key in order to be able to drop this guy. So you have to unwind the, the encryption hierarchy just like you would the other one. Now in the backups for encryption, let's just go into here and do backup. And this illustrates it a little better than, than just uh, explaining it. So if I wanted to do backup options, I could actually do encryption here. Now. The reason why it's not able to be checked is because I still have a media and I set a pend. So I'd have to say backup to new media set, new media. Then if I did that, then in my backup options, it would let me say encrypt and I could say how strong and then it would say my server cert. So again, in order to back up, I could specify a different algorithm and back up my database and that's how it works for backup encryption. You must do a new media set, so that's the first thing. And I'll script it out here to show you what you have to do in script. So basically you have to back up and you have to specify a new media name. And then this is just options that Management Studio puts in there, not that you have to, but you then use the encryption algorithm with the server certificate name. And again, not the key, but the name. And then they did stats. So in, in the great grand scheme of things, this is all supported by all your DML where you back up things, format, init, and then media name. You don't have to do these. I think you have to do, I don't think you have to do init. You can do format, but the media name is the important part. And then name, you can name your backup, which is whatever. But the big thing here is the new encryption setup. Encryption, uh, open parentheses, and then algorithm, AES-256, server certificate this. So you do get the benefit of, of backup encryption even on standard edition. Okay, that takes care of that. And let's go back to slides to finish up. All right, so I have I put in the slide deck the encryption DMVs. Uh, you can get key encryption, symmetric keys, certificates, and then the DM database encryption keys, and then the asymmetric keys. Uh, these all contain information about all your keys that you would use for encryption inside SQL Server. So if you ever want to know what's in them, go select from them and see what's there. Anytime you see pound pound in any name of an encryption key or a master key or any type of key, that is a system generated or a system based thing. It's, it is not a user one. So even when I created master key, you saw that it said pound pound database master key pound pound that's your indication that it's a SQL Server related thing that it's keeping track of. And that's why in the query you saw, you'll get in the demos, yeah, you saw that I eliminated all those that had pound pound in the beginning just because that is a system generated thing. Now things to watch for, back up a database before enabling TDE, you, again, protect yourself. Anything can happen. There can be a hardware blip, something could go awry, you could have corruption in the middle of TDE enabling. If you have a terabyte database, it could be halfway through and die. You better be able to recover from that uh, snafu or your database is gone. So back up a database and make sure you have that ready for you after uh, or before you enable TDE. 
uh, this is just the next one is related to that you could back up a thing or, or, or drop a certificate in the hierarchy prior to R2 SP2. But again, just don't be dropping certificates willy nilly before you know you have a backup of them. Uh, back up all your certificates and private keys and store them in multiple places with multiple protections so that you make sure that you can get your key back. If you put it on a USB key and that USB key gets wet and will not, no longer work, you've just lost your database. You have to go make sure you can back up the database, uh, the key again. So just protect all your secrets as you would protect your backups uh, off-site on site with password protection, whatever you have to do to make sure you can get that private key back because that's the, the, the private key and the public key are the most important things for your database. In mirroring and replication, it makes sense a little bit, but both databases will be encrypted and the reason is because you prime the database for mirroring with a backup and that backup is encrypted. So you would need to be able to, you need to establish the hierarchy on the other side of the mirror and then uh, you would you would have both databases that would be encrypted. The replication is there as well because the log is encrypted and it would need to be on the, si on the, on the, on the other side. The big benefit there is that by default anything traveling across the wire would also be encrypted so that's kind of handy. Uh, ticking time bombs, just be aware that even if you dropped your certificate, uh, which you can't now, but if you were pre-SP2, on R2, uh, 2008 R2, the database would actually continue to function until you restarted the instance and it would try to load that certificate which is not there, which means it couldn't decrypt the database. So it kind of, in, in the case where you don't know, you just make sure that you have backups so you can restore them. And then uh, to, to recap, uh, the TD is only available in Enterprise Edition. Everything else for certificate wise and symmetric keys and asymmetric keys is in all editions. Uh, SQL Server Express has symmetric keys and asymmetric keys um, and certificates, so they, that, that's all other editions. TDE is the, uh, the, the one that does not have that ability. Um, backup encryption is only available in standard and above, so that, that's to be aware of, and it's only 2014 and above, so you're, it's kind of a new feature. The data is encrypted at rest and not over the wire, so if I'm selecting data out of an encrypted database, I get unencrypted data and backup of data backups of encrypted databases are encrypted by, by that's just the way it is because the database files are encrypted and then please if there's nothing else you get uh, around the hierarchy is just protect that hierarchy anything in that hierarchy you should protect you can back up your master key you can back up your symmetric keys you can back up your certificates protect your keys like you would your databases and everything will should be okay Here's some resources you have, as was already mentioned, SQL Saturdays and SQL user groups, and also virtual user groups as we're attending now. Um, I left that off just because we are in one, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but there's website and swag.org, and there's many other SQL Server Central, SQL Team. There's plenty of resources out there for SQL. I think I could fill up seven slides with all the resources you could have. Um, but hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and, and I'll be around uh, to answer them right now. Um, feel free to take my uh, contact information. I'll put my contact information here. Uh, let's do this one. Yeah, this is my contact information. So if you want to take it down and email me with questions, I'm happy to take any uh, questions. Hopefully I can get back with you within a day. Uh, sometimes I'm a lot faster. I'm an email junkie, so I'm a little fast. I'm on Twitter at DBA Ducks. So thank you for attending and hopefully it was helpful information. So Ben, uh, this is Julie. I have a few questions were posted. Okay. If you're only using cell level encryption, is the tempdb still encrypted or is that only when you're encrypting the entire database? Only when you're encrypting an entire database. Yep, because you use keys and, and you can use certificates, but you don't alter the database and set encryption on when you do cell level encryption. So there is no tempdb encryption. And what's the difference between the certificate name and the certificate subject? Is the certificate subject the s certificate's password? No, the certificate subject is, so that, that this is governed by the, the internet standard out there, uh, the RFC regarding certificates. The subject is, is basically like a common name is what they call it. Um, it's just a, a it's the common name. In, in SQL, when you create it for encryption, the subject is just another way to name it. It's 
think of it like this. When you create the certificate and you name it My Server Cert, that's its name. The subject is like a description. So that's, that's what they are. You'll never see SQL Server use the subject as any type of moniker it, it, it finds it by. It will you always use the name, just like a database name or a file name. Does that help? Does that make, make sense? Yep. And then okay. w what if a memory dump occurs when the unencrypted data is in memory? Then you will have unencrypted data in the dump. That's the way it works. And let's see, this person, if they have a mirrored or log shipping databases already set up, do I need to break and re-add the mirroring or shipping to encrypt it? Or do, uh, does he just encrypt the primary? Boy, that is a very good question. I don't think you can encrypt a database if it is already involved in mirroring. You can, on the other hand, as long as you've put the encryption hierarchy in place, a log shipped database uh, shouldn't need anything else because it would go across in the log as you're creating a certificate um, or you're creating a database encryption key in the database. That is a logged event. So as long as I had the master key and the certificate in the master database that's the same as on the principal, then, uh, then the log shipping should actually work well. On the other hand, the database mirroring uh, I do not believe that it actually works uh, that way. I, I, I will actually test that in just a minute, um, and I can send Julie an email, or you can email me if you really want to know whether that happens, and I'll email whoever back that, w that wants to know. Um, I have not actually set up mirroring after the fact, or I mean TDE after the fact of mirroring, um, so I'm not honestly not sure what that does. Knowing how mirroring works, I don't believe you get that but but it creates files so if I guess if I had my encryption hierarchy it's potentially possible that it would work I, I'm gonna find that out though that's a very interesting question but log shipping for sure if you have the hierarchy set up on the log shipped side and you then alter the database and set it if I back it up back up the log and ship it it would change the shipping um, but I will test both of those to make sure what that is, and then I'll send Julie an email with the uh, updated slide deck or something like that to illustrate whether that's true. Well, I'll try to save the questions off so you can uh, email the person directly. Oh, uh, okay. Joe, Joe Dishkal said, with mirroring depre being deprecated, does it really matter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, mirroring, but mirroring being deprecated does not mean it will stop being used, I promise. Yes. The last one, I think, is how do you verify if the DP API exists? Well, it, it's a Windows feature and it's always turned on. It's just part of the operating system. Okay, all of a sudden. Yeah, that you can't turn that off. And I think that's all for for the questions. Uh, really, uh, real succinct and a very good presentation, Ben. Really appreciate your time uh, for the user group here. And hopefully I'll get the questions saved off and send those right. over to you. And um, thanks again for the presentation. This is Great, the thanks, DBA virtual chapter. I did want to say uh, today uh, our WAF raffle winner is Amir Khan. Uh, we are now giving away $100 Amazon gift cards. So he'll be notified today, but um, we had a little increase in funding. So uh, sign up for the next uh, webinar and you'll uh, have a chance to win uh the gift card from uh, which is sponsored by Dell Software. So thanks again for everyone attending and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Great.